Hi, welcome back to the statistics class. So today we're going to talk about other features of the correlation and regression. So I want to talk about the lurking variable, making prediction, interpolations and extrapolations, and the making prediction with weak data and outlier analysis. Okay, so now let's take a look. Lurking variables. So what's lurking variable? The lurking variable is the hidden variable that responsible for the apparent association. So look at these scatter plots. A study of mortality rate across the countries world worldwide noticed the association between the average lifespan and the average number of televisions owned. So look, the X variable means the TV per a thousand people that they own the numbers of TV, I should say. The number of TV that per 1,000 people owns. And then the X, Y value is the life expectancy. Now they say, hey, the, since this is a, what? A positive, relatively moderate, strong, let's say strong, except for some outliers in here, a correlation. So now they claim that, hey, the more TV that you own, since it's positive correlation, the more TV that you own, you tends to be lives longer. Does it make sense to you? Well, does this relate it? Think about it. No, right? Even though you don't know that field, we know that, hey, in reality, in reality, that's impossible. That means, hey, if I want to live up to 100 years old, maybe I just keep buying TVs. Okay, so what would be the lurking variable? Well, maybe we can think about, hey, the people who own small TV, they tend to be wealthier. So maybe wealthy is the lurking variable that is hidden but responsible for the association because the more money that you have, you will get a better health care. So you will tend to live longer. Okay, the next part is making prediction. Again, we use the Belmore example. If we wanted to find to the destination that was 500 miles from Belmore, how much would the ticket cost according to the model? So the model is y hat equals to 0 0.1373 times 500 at 8176. So that's approximately 150 150 and uh, 41 cents. Right? That's how we use the predicting model to predict the price. But if you wanted to fly to Sydney, Australia from Baltimore, which is 9,782 9, miles, do you think this model would make a good prediction? Well, let's take a look at our model again. So this is our model. So let's take a range. So Sydney is 9,700 miles away from Baltimore. But look at the range. That all the data that we connected, the distance, are from what? The lowest one is 189 to the furthest away is 1,500. So Sydney, we know that the x value or the x value range is from 189 to 15, 15 what? Let me take a look. I've got 1502. So that's the x value. So Sydney is way far out of our data set. So probably no. This is not going to make a good prediction of our model. So the way that we explain this is because this is out of the data set range. When we create or generalize, when we generate the model, it's based on our data set. But the range of the data set is from 189 to 1502. <coughs> Okay, and then if you wanted to fly to the destination that was 10 miles from Baltimore, do you think this model would make a good prediction? 
No. Again, it's the same reasoning. This is outside of our data set. <laughs> okay, the good way to explain it is you can say, hey, flying to Sydney from Belmont. Maybe Belmont doesn't even have international flights. I don't know. I mean, that's something that you can look at. But from our data that we know that in here, take a look. All of this seems like a domestic flight. So we don't have international flights as our data set. So that is really, is a, should use a different model to predict because international Wi-Fi, they may uh, involve with like custom charges because it's extra longer distance. Maybe the rate that they use is going to be different. Okay, whereas the one that we are trying to buy, which is 10 miles away from Belmont. Honestly, if it's 10 miles away, I can just bike. I don't even need to take a, take a plan, waiting, go through the security get there like an hour earlier. Maybe by the time that I get to the airport and boarding, when I bite in, I'm already get there. <laughs> okay, so now they have another way to explain it, this phenomenon. It's called interpolation versus extrapolation. Extrapolation. So interpolation is a making prediction within the S value of your data set, which is the first one that we use if we predicted some flight that is 500 away from Baltimore, okay, yes, we can use this model to predict it because this is under interpolation. Oops. But what is extrapolation? Extrapolation is making the prediction that beyond the data set. So, how do you know that the trend will be continual? So these two example is our extrapolation. So that means we shouldn't use our predictive model. But to be careful, we know that hey, the X range, the data set we connected is from 189 to 1502. That means even though it's a little bit out of the range, we will still consider it's a good model to predict, such as if you find for destination is 118, I say, hey, that's close enough. We can still use the same model to predict it. But like, for example, this one, hey, if we find for some places 15, 16, hey, this is still a good model, but it's way far away, which is 9,000. 9, I don't want to use that model because the trend might be discontinued. Okay, another feature of the correlations is making prediction with a weak data. So now let's take a look. Fast food is often considered unhealthy because of much of high in both fat and sodium. But uh, these two are related. Here are the fat and the sodium content contents of several brands of burger. I'm going to use GeoGebra to find out that, that. So again, we put in the data fat and then sodium. I'm going to pause the video and do it by myself. Okay, now I already put all of the data in here. Again, you highlight the data that you want it to generate a scatter plot, and then you click on two variable regression. Here we are. So here is our scatter plot. So the first question they ask you is to find the correlation of the least square regression line for this data and describe the association. So from the graph, we can tell that, hey, this is a positive regression, but it's really close to zero, um, but still positive. But we can say, hey, this is quite spread out. And let's take a look at the statistic. Well, R is equal to 0 0.199. That means this is a weak correlation. Okay, so we can write this down. So R equals to 0 0.199 is a weak correlation. 
And uh, also we can take a look at our prediction model from here. Y hat equals to 6.8129x plus 913, 0 0.159. So basically, we need to find out the regression model. That's the regression model. It's a linear regression model. And it's a weak positive correlation. So what's the, what's the average fat? Okay, from the statistic, we can find that, hey, fat, remember the first column is our x. I should write that in here. The first column is always our x. The second column is our y. So now take a look. So the average in fat is what? x bar equals to 13.4.2859 gram. And then number C asks you that what's the average of the sodium, which is the mean of y. y bar equals to 11.9 11, 1138.57 so this is our y bar which is the average of our sodium so if a burger has 32 grams of fat how much sodium do we expect it to have so we plug in since this is x equals to 32 into our regression model so our prediction is what times 32 This is equals to 1,125 milligram. So that means if a burger has 32 grams of fat, you will expect it to have 1,125 milligrams of sodium. We can still use this to make a prediction, but this prediction is not going to be really accurate because of the weak correlation. Okay, the outlier. So now let's take a look back at our Miami in the flight airfare data. We talked about that Miami be the possible outlier. Why is that? Because they have a really big residual, right? That it has the largest residual. Can you think of any reason to respond to explain the cost of the airfare to Miami? So in the previous class that let's do some review, we found out that the residual of the flight to Miami is, oh, I don't remember how to say. <laughs> I think it's 180 something. Um, it's 113.8, which means from our model, the predicted value is 211, and the observe, that means in the reality, it costs 350. So the difference is, which is the residual, is 138. So what would be the reason that they cost much higher than the predicted? Well, maybe because from Belmont and Miami, you don't have straight flight. You need to take a transfer. Maybe that costs more money, or maybe because Miami is a popular destination, so everyone wants to go there. That by the supply and demand relationship, you know, more people want to go there, the higher price is going to be. So, whatever reason, think about it by yourself. Um, so, write down the regression equation and correlation for the data set, including Miami. So, which is our original one. Um, okay, so perform the regression again without Miami. And write down the linear regression. Okay, what we can do is we go back to our data set in here. This one is the Miami one. We're going to delay this one. Delay the object and let's generate a new regression model. Two variable regression model. That's it. See, we already missing this dot, the Miami dot. And now we have a new statistic, R. Our new R equals to 0 
and our regression model y hat equals to 0.1168x plus 183.3086. So remember when the regression model with Miami r is equals to, let me take a look from the previous. is what is it oh it's here it's six point six nine fifteen three so in our O with the Miami is point six nine fifteen three so that means what without Miami let's compare to this R R is bigger the bigger means you have a stronger correlation so is there a meaningful difference between these two models? Yes. Yes. The slope is different. The y-intercept is different. And r is significant difference. So that means which model do you think is more accurate? I would say the second model seems more accurate because you have a stronger r value. Okay, should we describe Miami as an outlier? Yes, because without Miami, our second model seems have a strong seems more accurate. So now yes, Miami is the outliers. Okay, so that's it. That's the other feature of the correlation. In next class, we will have more example about the regression model. I'll see you next time.